smell what the rock is cooking. Hello and welcome to the Rage Like Community Podcast. And in this corner, being 400 pounds, sopping wet, full of passion and fury, is Armstrong. Ryan, are, are you all right? You, you realize you're you're not in the ring anymore. I am perfectly all right, my friend. And in this corner is Illegal Swede with a full whopping 100 pounds of fury. Armstrong, do we need to help him? Ryan, okay? it, it's, it's been four years. I don't know what you're talking about. Now, let's get ready to rumble! I think we need to get you some help. What's going on? Where are we? What's happening? Okay, he's having a moment of lucidity. Quick, hit him with the je- injection. Oh, no! <laughs> I hope people enjoy that with my relapse. Oh. It's humorous because they... Because aging wrestlers have brain damage, damage. <laughs> Did you see brain damage, damage? Yes. <laughs> My time it's in the brain. ring may be over, but I will always be known as Julio Gonzalez. <laughs> you, I thought you were going to follow it up with a more elaborate name than nope. just a. <laughs> nope. All right, starting off from a, a high point. <laughs> oh. Jesus Christ. All right, uh, <laughs> welcome to the community podcast again. Look, the, the cringe, the level of cringe can only go down from here, okay? I'm also known as the white Mexican. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I think it just went up again. That's it. All right, uh, there's not a lot of big stuff that happened this week, but just a lot of tiny little things that all build into a lot of stuff. I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> First up, Valkyria Chronicles is coming to the PS4, the original game, which because didn't they just announce that there was a new one coming along? Yes, they did. Yeah, so the original is getting remastered and it's coming to PlayStation 4. Now, I'm, I'm almost sure that we did talk about this. What is it? The new one's called Valkyrie something, like Rising or some shit. Yeah. Yeah, and then what was it? Like, none of you have played Valkyrie Chronicles, if I remember? Nope. No. Yeah. Yeah. And for those who actually have, but it's a lot like XCOM. Not the bad one that was like a freaking uh, third-person shooter. I'm talking like... The Bureau uh, XCOM to classify. Oh, don't even talk. Oh, God, that was such a dis... That was <laughs> awful. That's my game of the year. I don't know what you're talking about. Get the hell out. Get out. <laughs> Please. No, uh, that... Yeah, but uh, no, this is more uh, with XCOM, Enemy Unknown, Within, Therefore, and Art Thou, and... Vis a vis, quid pro quo. Yeah. C'est la vie. Yeah, they really, when you think about it, they have some generic fucking names for XCOM. <laughs> well, Cogito, this one is. Cogito cool. ergo sum. I don't speak Frenchy. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, this one's gonna run at 60 FPS and it'll cost 30 bucks. Oh. You know, 60 FPS, please. I don't go anything up. Anything below 90 frames per second is just garbage. No, 120, dude. Come on. <laughs> you're going to oh, hold the developers to a higher standard, okay? It's 2016. Please. I mean, PC Master Race, people. I need my three-quad processor, and I don't even know what, the, I don't even know what I'm talking about. Consoles are dying. I don't know why we even bother with them anymore. Oh, oh yeah, so, um, whereas the Tomb Raider came out for PC, it runs at, like, 19 frames a second. You're... It does! Does it really? Oh, God. <laughs> it's That's like, sad. It's like one of them... It's not even that it doesn't play, it's just really poorly optimized. It does. Yeah. Uh... That sucks. Honestly, there was something I read, I don't know what it was about, but it was, like, for a time, it, like... For some weird reason, was I, I read this two days ago, where apparently they had a, on Steam, they had a uh, sale for Rise of the Tomb Raider, and it was like 34% off or something. Well, they don't have a lot of those sales on Steam, do they? Quite rare, actually. Well, it's extremely rare for a game that just came out on its first day, get, day to be like, yeah, we're, we're mm-hmm. making this game that just came out to be 34% off. I don't know. 
know, didn't they usually do that for games that have been previously released on other platforms? I mean, didn't they do that with uh, I think, I think, Knight? Yeah, I think that's right. Wait, with what game? Arkham Knight, didn't they do that? No, no, I don't think they did. I know I, it was that significant of a decrease, but I know it wasn't. I think that's why they made a big de- That's one of the big reasons that they made a big deal out of it, because it was like, oh, we got charged a full $60 for a game that couldn't even, like, work for the first five minutes. Yeah. Who? Poor Rise of the Tomb Raider. Apparently it's actually a really decent game, too. Yeah. Uh, just I, what is it? I remember who's that one guy who does the um the really short, really fast paced. Uh, oh, Yahtzee. Yahtzee. Yeah, he made a joke about where it, about it where it's like, yeah, I'm really fucking waiting for her to become the actual Tomb Raider because it seems like it's being all, that these titles are being like Rise of the Tomb Raider, uh, becoming the maybe becoming the Tomb Raider, possibly being the Tomb Raider, and Eventually finally being the Tomb Raider. The Tomb Raider. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. If they know. even make it. Tomb Raider Begins. Tomb Raider <laughs> Begins, yeah. Like, did she, I, I haven't played the new one, but is like, does she finally do the whole double pistol thing yet, or what? Well, she, they, they did it at the end of the first game, didn't they? If they yeah. did it in the end, but it was as, like, a cutscene. And it was basically a way of saying, look, look, she's possibly finally the Tomb Raider. And it's like, okay, <laughs> fine. <laughs> oh, Squeenix. I mean, Squeenix. Crystal Dynamics. <laughs> I thought it was Squeenix. Well, they, well they, Squeenix they, published it. Oh, Squeenix. Well, they yeah. bought uh, Crystal Dynamics a couple years ago, didn't they? Yeah. Speaking of fuck ups by Square Enix, was it they're doing? They're trying to milk Kingdom Hearts as much as possible, even yeah, more than they were. Oh, and it's God. like this is the <laughs> this is the what's it the prologue to Kingdom Hearts three or something? Wait, it's take called? something I love and just shit on it. Yeah, it's like what is it? it's called Kingdom Hearts HD two point eight Final Chapter Prologue. It's like. <sighs> What is difficult to understand about just put all the old games in HD on PS4 and people will buy it. Don't give us this, oh, this is a prologue chapter which puts one of the games and also a movie that connects. It's like, fuck you! Well, I'm, I'm just, <laughs> just give me all the that, games! Because like, me and uh, uh, Rocky, we were talking about this where it's like, the more they went on with the Kingdom Hearts, the more insane whoever was naming them must have had like split personality or something, or was like Tyler Jordan. Chain of memories. Yeah, and because as he progressed, he would make crazier shit. Days divided by two. <laughs> yeah, and now it's Kingdom Hearts HD 2.8 Final Chapter Prologue. It's like what was that um <laughs> the the thing they bought out for Dead Rising Three that was just supposed to be like a parody of those sorts of things. I it was, was like par- it was like a parody of that and also a parody of uh, Street Fighter games, wasn't it? Yeah, what was it like Dead Rising Three Super X Alpha Combo 3D Edition or something like that? Yeah, yeah it was someone. I believe a yeah. Guacamole also did one. Yeah, the the Guacamole release on the Xbox One and PS4 was like Super Turbo Championship Edition. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's like watch take a piss out of. Uh, <laughs> those kind of naming conventions. I wonder if this game, if this Kingdom Hearts, blah, 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 if it's going to be like Metal Gear Solid, uh, what was the one that okay. was only two hours yeah, long? Hang on, hang on. Oh, right. Ground this, Zeroes. This, this yeah. is what it was actually, this is what um the Dead Rising one was called. Super Ultra Dead Rising 3 Arcade Remix Hyper Edition EX Plus Alpha. Yeah, that's definitely a, a Street <laughs> Fighter rip rather than a... <laughs> and uh, that's more because... It's Capcom. <laughs> Dead Rising mm. is Capcom, so... Yeah, and they get crazy with their shit sometimes. A lot of the time. <laughs> Not anymore, though. They said they aren't gonna, for at least for 5, that they're gonna drop that shit, and Street Fighter Five is gonna be the only version of the game they release. Really? They say. Yeah, yeah. I... Well, speaking of Street Fighter Five, uh, apparently it will not launch with a story mode. What? Okay. So the story mode is going to launch in in June 2016. When oh my god! In February, but it is going to come as a free update, meaning there's no purchasing necessary. It'll just when you update the game, when there's a new content update, it'll be added, and it's called. I the still don't like cinematic that. story experience. I, I don't think that's like really that. a bad thing. I mean, but it's like the thing about it's like okay, 
this is coming out February 16th, so by when this comes out, like two weeks, mm-hmm. right? And you just said it's coming out in June, so what is that? That's like one, two, that's four months, four or five months from now, and I don't like that people can do that now, where it's like, oh yeah, we can put in whatever the fuck we want, because mm. like, then, because by that logic, what stops them from taking it out? Mm. Also, you know what I, I mean? I think it's more of a just I mean, matter of they're not finished with it yet, and they want to get the game out so Capcom can start seeing some return on their investment. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the I, way I, I see it... That, that people can do that nowadays. Just put whatever they want in now. That's... I don't know. Mm. That just sounds like that could easily go bad. Yeah, I mean, the way I see it, that pretty much every fighting game that isn't Mortal Kombat has had a really shit story, so... Yeah. But, well, like, yeah, does it... Does it really matter when the story <laughs> mode in Street Fighter is basically just the arcade, but with a couple of, like, text boxes in between them? Nah, yeah. yeah uh, like 100,000 people who care about the Street Fighter overall narrative. I must admit, I am interested, because it's like, it seems like one of the main villains pulls a Mr. Burns and blocks out the sun. <laughs> <laughs> really sounds. <laughs> Smithers, massage my back. <laughs> the only time I ever cared about Street Fighter story, Street Fighter story, was when I was thirteen and I watched the animated Street Fighter Two movie where they showed Chun Li naked in the shower. <laughs> wow. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, Excuse that me. actually happened. <laughs> not Cammy uh, though. Hmm. No, no Cammy. Oh, disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so y'all remember that Five Nights at Freddy's World game? No. That totally no. came out? Yeah, well, now it's not on Steam anymore. Okay. The, and, and nobody cared. Nobody cares. But the creator pulled it from Steam, quote, saying that even though the game had a, quote, quote, very positive rating with 87%, I was not satisfied with the reviews and the ratings it was getting. For this reason, I have decided to remove the game from Steam. He says that he's going to try to fix the game, and when he's done, he's going to release it for free, but this just seems like he didn't know what the fuck he was doing, and he released a game that most of the diehard fans didn't care for. So this guy's just pretty much whining, saying, oh, I can't believe that people don't like my stuff, so I'm just going to take it away, and... Right. Mm. Oh, that isn't that fucking precious. (laughs) Yeah. Nobody cares about your game anymore, except we're talking about it, so we, I guess we kind of care a little bit, but whatever. Let's move on. I never, <laughs> yeah, I never got into the Five Nights at Freddy's things. It just... I don't like horror games, so... I do like horror games well, I just when don't it's like done well, but it's like, all the Five Nights at Freddy's game quantified to was just easy, cheap fucking jump scares, and that was it. Yeah. Gotta get that YouTube money. Well, money of people watching YouTubers play, and then they buy it themselves. Then, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah, cycles. All right, so <laughs> Mighty Number no. Nine has been delayed for a third time. Has been pushed from its February release date to quote spring 2016. So no solid release date. Apparently, this is due to. The developer broke the news via Kickstarter backers by blaming on blaming the problems on network and porting issues. They saying they're being forced to rewrite Unreal Three code because they stop because Epic stopped supporting Unreal Three and releasing updates for it. So now they have to actually go into the code of the engine and try to rewrite a bunch of shit. See, this is hilarious because last week when Armstrong was reading off, like, all of the games that were coming out, we were laughing so hard at the concept of Mighty Number no. 9 coming out, and we all guessed right. Yeah. Even before it was announced that it was going to get uh, just pushed back again. And yeah. Yeah, this thing's had nothing but fucking problems. It better be good. That's pretty much the... Because <laughs> if... Un- it- I, you know, he's not totally fucked because he's working on that Microsoft exclusive ReCore. Oh, but, um, this is pretty much one of his... If he fucks this up, he's gonna have a long road ahead of him winning back trust. Well, 
how many games have been delayed this long and they've come out and actually been good? Like one? Yeah. Yeah. What? Bioshock Infinite, maybe, and that's it. Yeah. Yeah, it's... I was really excited for this game when it was first announced, but just all the... And I liked some of the early videos, but... It just doesn't seem like... And I haven't played it, so... This is me going off watching YouTube videos. It just doesn't seem... That engaging? <laughs> when you're playing? Like... I don't know. It just... Something about it just looks off to me. Like, not something that'd be like... Like the other Mega Man games where you're like, Oh man, I'm just gonna sit down and play this until I beat it. This is like, oh, I'll play it for like 10 or 15 minutes at a time. Yeah. Uh, Alright. Um, there was... Uh, <laughs> the teaser that Platinum is gonna announce their official Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game, and then later they actually did announce their... <laughs> official Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game which was leaked by almost everything but now it's officially announced they released the trailer Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles something in Manhattan god damn it what's the title <laughs> Mutants in Manhattan yeah it's basically like their Transformers Devastation game but with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles which if there was anyone el other than Ryan on this podcast, that would be a very positive thing because he seems to be the only person I've ever heard of talking shit about that game. Okay, but, okay. Let me I haven't played it, so... I, I said, but, remember, what I said was, um, is that it was really good. It was great. But it was way too short to be charging 40 bucks for it. Like, yeah, it was... Way it was for it was pretty dollars. good. Yeah. I thought it was pretty good. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It was good, but to charge forty dollars for what was basically like what five hours, maybe to beat uh, and everything, and there was no real like replayability. I'm like, yeah, that's not enough. Um, but no, they've always they've done more or less good for like um, other IPs. That they didn't themselves create, because, like, the Legend of Korra game was fun, mm. uh, up to a point. And, you know, it, it was, like, $15, so it was fair. Um, the Transformers game was real fun. It was just that, you know, $40 was a little too much for me. Um, and this will probably be fun, too. Okay. It certainly looks like the type of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle game that people have been asking for for a long time. Yeah. Wasn't there another one that came out quite recently? Another. I don't know. Wasn't was that like a an X and uh, an Xbox Live Summer of Arcade title? It, I don't know. It, it was probably based off of the uh, Nickelodeon cartoon, which I heard is actually pretty good. It is pretty good. Yeah. You it's, actually amazing it that, like... it's kind of funny that uh, looking at the trailer, they look better than uh, Michael Bay's turtles do. <laughs> mm. I remember that load of shit got really weird, and there's like one season where they basically went to the future and like Krang had taken over. Um, Wasn't that the original? Uh, not the original. I mean, like the the, the Fox Box late... one, the one that was yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I thought that's what I thought you were talking about. No, I haven't even touched the uh, the the. You were talking about the one with the 3D animation, right? No, it, it was 2D an uh, or yeah. No, no, no. no. I was yes. talking about yeah. You're both you're both saying the same thing, but you're yeah. the subjects. They need yeah. better they need better titles for their Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle thing. No, yeah, I remember the the TMNT one where like I really liked it, and then I like it did the traditional fucking Saturday morning cartoon thing where they just don't announce when it's leaving, and then just like a few months later you just turn it on, and it's like oh it's been going for twelve weeks. You're yeah. like, what? And. Mm -hmm. It, yeah, they, like, made a huge time jump in the future. It's like, I don't know what the fuck's going on. They all have, like, space armor and shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they, like, went to some island, and I'm pretty sure, that, like, the TMNT equivalent of, like, Modok was there, and he was in charge of all the prisoners or something. <laughs> that was weird. Weird. Yeah. It's kind of funny, yeah. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles has had, like, in the last couple of years, has had pretty good, like, they've had two really good shows. I wonder if we'll ever get to the point where it's like we'll start referring to it as like the TMNT mythology or the TMNT the canon. <laughs> oh, there's got to be people that are like that already. 
I think. <laughs> Wait. All right, uh, moving on. Moving right along. All right, so the guy who created, who was one of the people who created Payday, the heist, has formed a new studio and is working on a cooperative first-person shooter. Big surprise. Called Ten... Ch oh, no, wait. Ten Chambers might be the name of the studio. Yeah. <laughs> the new studio he found is Ten Chambers Collective. I don't know if they've released the name of the game, but... Yeah. It's just... It's going to be a cooperative sh first-person shooter. Surprise, like surprise. Payday. Yeah. <laughs> Woohoo. Yeah. We got, we got a lot of those, so... Yeah. Uh, yeah. It'll... It's like surprise, it surprise, man. Other than that, to help him stand out. From, I don't even. I never played any of the payday games, but I don't really see why they're so. It got so popular as it did. Um, it's okay if you're playing with friends, but if you're playing with like random people online, it's nowhere near as fun. Yeah, I, I don't know. It, it's very cookie cutter, you know. It's pretty much cop killer simulator. I mean, really, there's nothing else that's deep about it or to have. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <clears throat> All right, so Square Enix, not Square Enix, Capcom announced that Umbrella Corpse, the Resident Evil game that's kind of like a pseudo sequel to hey, Corpse, get it? Resident Evil Operation yeah. Raccoon City, which was which, a game that I actually kind of like as a guilty pleasure. You're one of the only people I've ever heard say that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Umbrella Corpse is designed to be a multiplayer shooter. It will also support single player mode called quote, quote, the experiment. There will be more than 20 missions that play out similar to the horde mode with objectives. It will be $30 and it will be digital only and it will be on PS4 and PC. Okay. Yeah, better than releasing a $60 game that everyone will shit on. Yeah. Still no word on Resident Evil 7, but... Wasn't oh, we'll just, they were just reboot, reboot it. it. Yeah, weren't yeah. they... Wasn't there a rumor they were going to reboot it? I kind of hope they do because I'm pretty much too late to enjoy the Resident Evil games, because, like, well, I got in way late to... Because, like, the first one I played, officially, was Resident Evil 5, and by that time, they had pretty me much... Me too! <laughs> yeah, so they had pretty much ditched the, like, extreme horror thing, and then gone plot. with, like, like, jump scare action. Yeah. For the most Which, part, to be fair, that was... For some reason, people remember the, the first one, it's like, oh, remember, that it was so scary when the zombie dog jumped through the window... Mm, no, it was a jump scare. It wasn't even that scary. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, that is kind of a thing where it's like almost all horror games. I'm pretty sure all horror games, on some level, or at least a grand majority, what they do is you know jump scares. You know, Dead Space jump scares. Uh, Dead Space Two jump scares. Resident Evil jump scares. Yeah, everyone shits on jump scares, but they're kind of an essential part of most horror. True. It's, it's just a matter of overusing them yeah. and, re yeah. and re like relying exclusively on them. I just kind of said the same thing. If you I'm... if you earn jump scares, like in a, a film like Sinister, where they're used very sparsely, look at me just like sucking Carlos dick. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but if you look at something like Paranormal Activity, which is a, a film series that I completely jump scares. loathe, yeah. yeah. Right, so uh, Umbrella Corpse coming out. Cool, yeah. If you're into that, it's it's. I'm, I'm it's I'm glad that they're making it a thirty dollars and not a full sixty dollar release. So and it's gonna it's gonna come out and it's gonna essentially be like Alone in the Dark, that um, four player game that came out. Oh yeah. <laughs> it was really terrible. <laughs> oh jeez. Yep. All right, so uh, this is kind of just like a business thing. Sony Computer Entertainment is no more. It is now Sony Interactive Entertainment. So they just changed Before the name. Rebranded. Well, uh, I think what I essentially got from reading about this is that they're going to refocus a lot of their efforts to basically the PlayStation brand, where Computer Entertainment was like a bunch of different things that PlayStation also fell under. And now they're just going to kind of focus it on Let's back the PlayStation because that's one of the few things that's making us money. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, this means better infrastructure. For I, the I don't know if you've um, I don't know if you've got it down as one of your stories, but 
there was this thing that EA basically like outed how many units the Xbox Oh yeah, yeah, I, I was going to get to that. We'll we'll get to that eventually. Actually, we can just do that right now because this isn't really much of a story. It's just kind of like, oh, they changed their name and they're going to refocus efforts. All right, corporate talk, whatever. Uh, yeah, do you want to go into that? Uh, well, there was a statement from some head honcho at EA basically saying that I think total they had, I want to say, 55 million units out uh, between the PS4 and the Xbox One. And we already know that the PS4 has sold around, uh, what, like 39 million? Something like so, that. So that means that uh, the Xbox One's sat at 19 million. Yeah. That don't sound good. <laughs> well, here's the thing, is Microsoft has even said that they're selling Xbox Ones faster than they have sold, than they had sold Xbox 360s at this point. Ah. So both companies are doing really well. It's just a matter of PlayStation is doing much better. Because <laughs> they, they had that initial uh, it seems boost. To be I don't know if you can even blame the initial push anymore, because it's consistently selling. Well, no, they've they've said that the um, uh, the sales for the PS4 actually they were going up and up and up, and then they've apparently peaked and they've basically remained the same for the past like six months, probably longer. I think. So it was an exponential growth, and now it's more of a linear growth. Yeah. Okay. Still. Yeah. So it seems it kind of. See, I, w- I would have said it seems to be like the opposite of what happened with the PS3 and the Xbox 360, mm-hmm. where it was like, oh yeah, you know. Xbox 360 was in the up and up and up and up and up, and if I remember, it, it, the same thing happened to it, where it was, like, kind of peaked, and then later down the line, PS3 did, like, their thing, where I was like, oh, yeah, we're doing PlayStation Plus, free games, and we're doing, you know, you get free, uh, what was it, free multiplayer and all that, and that's, like, in its later life when it started getting pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. So, it really, it, it, it will really just take Microsoft to start some some really big pushes to bring people over. And I think that we've already seen them start to do with that with the backwards compatibility and their uh, mm. stuff like that. <laughs> it all, At this point, all it really comes down to is give us some good games. Yeah. Give us some exclusives, multi-platforms, whatever. Give Which, us uh, some good games. Give Which, us uh, some really good yeah. third-party... Seriously, yeah, there hasn't been good third... Like, really amazing third-party support since, like, PS2 era. Like, that was on that level. What? Yeah. Like, third-party, like, third-party games. You mean, like, third-party exclusives, or just, like, multi-platforms? Uh, exclusives. Okay. Yeah. I was like, well, (laughs) we just had, like... A bunch I of mean, great games come out this year. That I know a lot of people probably don't agree, but I I thought Sunset Overdrive was pretty good. Wait, which one? Yeah, I, I, I saw Sunset. a lot of weird like I, I haven't played it. I want to play it, but you know, but is it's it exclusive? It, but it's like that and what else came out for Xbox One that was like an exclusive for its own? Titanfall. Well, I was talking about like a third party. Oh yeah, when, okay, yeah, third party. Yeah, but what, what else? Then? Titanfall. Titanfall was on PC in 360, so I don't know yeah, if so, I guess so. Yeah. Um, um, I guess Rise of the Tomb Raider would count, too, kind of, until I now. Well, not, not anymore. Yeah, yeah, until now. What um, else? Huh. Like, I don't really think... Kill, it's... Killer, Inst- Killer Instinct was done by a third party, wasn't it? I guess so, yeah. Well, yeah, there was a yeah. Iron I mean, they technically, they own, the, they own the IP, but, you know, third party developer. Right, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I do. when I think about Xbox, I don't think... I mean, like, the obvious one is, yeah, of course, you know, like... I mean, if you want to just say exclusive, exclusive, then, you know, you obviously bring in Halo, but that's, like, a fucking given. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Gears. Gears. Dead yeah, Rising 3. What was that? Dead, yeah, Dead, 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 yeah, Dead Rising 3 for a time, and then it was like, oh, yeah, now we're bringing this out for PC. And, and apparently, like, a lot of the Remedy stuff as well. But that always makes it a PC eventually. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, that one remedy thing. I, I always forget. Quantum What's break. that one about the time travel and Quantum Break? Quantum Break. Yeah, we just talked about that last week. Jesus. Yeah, you no, know, I always talk about it. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Hasn't even come out in its Swedes game of the year. 
Oh yeah. yeah. Well, well, what other like Uncharted Four? Come on. No, it's you like come an, on. Like I'm IP. stoked for that game. Get the fuck out. Yeah, it was Nathan. Uh... Nathan Drake, please. <laughs> That was fighting. Just some chump, just some chump with a half tuck. Come on. <laughs> Looks like I'm gonna get that wrestling match that I wanted. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. How many, are there any uh, PS4? Speaking of exclusive, are there any other than Uncharted? Are there Pick any that up. to mind that are coming out in 2016? Uh, no Man's Sky. No Man's Sky. Oh, well, I'll believe it. Um, I see it. <laughs> The uh, Suda is the Suda Fifty One with it. It's like um, is it uh, let it let it die? Oh Suda... yeah, I totally I don't know forgot why, about that. I don't know why that games in my head. Um, then there was that. <sighs> there's a, there's a lot of really weird ones. Oh, like, the there's probably is... on to death. There's probably a new God of War game coming this year. Uh, people are oh uh, near Autotoma. Oh yeah, never heard of that. Uh, Final Fantasy VII remake, which I don't—that's not fucking coming out this year. No way. No, absolutely no not. No fucking way. Shenmue three again. No way. Horizon Zero Dawn. Which one was oh, that yeah, one? Shot. Oh yeah, she shot it with. Oh, right, that was the... Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Your bullshit has... comparison that <laughs> exactly, nobody else understands. Exactly the fucking same gameplay. <laughs> exactly the same. You have no idea. What which one? I'm talking about. <laughs> what? <laughs> Comparing Horizon Zero Dawn to Shadow I remember because of when it got announced in the comments of that <laughs> I article, think, I, I would say it's closer <laughs> to Tomb Raider than anything else. But with the seriously, it's true. Oh, um, um, that's another one. Uh, Last Guardian. Oh yeah. Oh well, you mentioned that. Uh, again. again, like No Man's Sky, I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh yeah, no Star Citizen's supposed to be coming out this year, isn't it? <laughs> That ain't fucking coming out. I, you know, speaking of Star Citizen, okay, so apparently this week they're doing a free alpha where if you sign in, anyone can do it. If it's this long and you're only at the alpha now, it's like... I don't expect this game to be coming out. I really 2020 don't. 2020 release date. Yeah. Oh, Persona 4. Isn't that supposed to be coming out this year? It's on the PS3 as well, isn't it? Yeah. Is it? Okay, yeah. More of a Sony exclusive, but... Yeah. yeah. I really... I, I said Persona 4. I meant 5. Yeah. Yeah. I really... They're all the same. They're all the same. This year, this need... Uh... <laughs> yeah. Because, yeah, if that comes out this year, then, yeah, that would, in all likelihood, probably be my game. Is that year. Nino Kuni sequel announced for this year? No, it does never release date. No, nah, I think it's for next year, honestly. Uh, I, I, well, actually, there's, I don't even think there's... Yeah, yeah, there's no release date. Yeah, I guess the Yakuza series, Yakuza Six. How big doesn't have a Yakuza Western series date yet? Hmm? How big is the Yakuza series? I want. It's got a pretty big. It, I mean, they've made six of. <laughs> they have six numbered iterations, and they just they've made like two or three spinoffs. Then they have the, one with the uh, zombies. They did the zo- yeah the zombie one. What was it? Dead Souls that came out like 2011. Yeah. Oh, Ratchet and Clank. That technically counts. Yeah, the most meta video game to show up ever. A, a game based on a movie that was based off of a fucking game. I'm fucking Isn't stoked it? for it. <laughs> I never played any. Um... And this one looks fucking gorgeous. Isn't, Jesus this, isn't there supposed to be a new Sly Cooper game coming out this year? Is there? Because there's the film coming out this year as well. I don't know if they've announced a new Sly Cooper game. That would, uh, I don't think so. I don't think... I know the movie was announced, and I know they have a trailer, but other than that, there's been oh, nothing. There's that, um, like, the spin-off to Heavenly Sword is coming oh, out right. as well. Yeah. What was it? What's that one? I, I know that Rocky really likes the game, the series, and it's based off of uh, the Dragon Guard. Nier. Nier, yeah. Yeah, I you wrote really You said Nier. That. Did you? Okay, my bad. <laughs> I said it, and you're like, I don't know what the fuck that is. Did I? My bad. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's go back to the news. Rocky's going to give you a lecture when he gets some. <laughs> I'll just send yeah. that audio clip. Shit, Lords. How could you not know about Nier? I'll cut it up and say, like, you're talking about, oh, that game's going to be garbage. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's basically, so... just shut up, Mortar. It's basically just shut up, Mortar. I don't know what okay. you're talking about, man. I think it looks more like Tomb Raider. <laughs> so. <laughs> 
Flying Wild Hog, some guys who used to be ex People Can Fly developers who made the kind of popular, not kind of, the surprise hit Shadow Warrior and the new upcoming Shadow Warrior 2. Who are pretty are, much now known for just putting, like, throwing three words together and seeing what sticks. <laughs> They're re releasing their original game that got people a lot of people's attention, Hard Reset, as a Redux version. Oh, yeah. Um, huh. PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One. I, I always wanted to play that. It looked pretty good. It's basically what I've heard it described as is Shadow Warrior, except in the future. Yeah. Which there's nothing fucking wrong with that. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> did anyone, did either of you play the Shadow Warrior game that came out? Oh, yeah. What was it? It was 2014. No, I, I wanted to. No, it wasn't. Yeah, when did it was that like come out? 2014 or 2014. 2014, yeah. Yeah. It Sorry. was really fucking fun. It was, uh, yeah, it was fun. I'm really yeah. looking forward to it. Apparently that's supposed to be coming out this year. Yeah. The second one. It's got co-op. Yes. Which, God, let's hope it doesn't end up like Unity. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) All right. uh, So the Bungie CEO, Harold, and God damn it, Harold Ryan has stepped down from his position as president and CEO and the board of directors appointed some guy named Pete Parsons who had been working on Destiny. Now he's basically their guy to spearhead all Destiny things moving forward. God damn it. I think we said that last week, and I think what I said last week was, Jesus, everyone's leaving Bungie. Mm. Yeah, it's... There was that report that came out that uh, from Kotaku that uh, Destiny 2 is not going to come out this year, even though it was supposed to, even, even though it wasn't actually officially announced. But and it's kind of there's kind of a creative mindfuck going on over a bungee, so maybe this is just kind of a solidifying that they're yeah. trying to find a new way to go with things. I think maybe um that song from Apocalypse Now is plays this is the end. <laughs> yeah. Because let's face it, Bungie are a shell of their former selves. Pretty much all of oh, them yeah. kind of left. Well, when, it's like uh, it's like what can you expect from a developer that, no offense, but has been making the same basic idea for what was it? It's been like fifteen years, almost twenty. Almost well, twenty. Yeah. When was the first Halo came out? Uh, even before 2000? that, the and then they made Arizona. Army and yeah, yeah. <laughs> the last thing not that wasn't a first person shooter they made was the Myth games. Man, how long ago was that? <laughs> yeah. What was it? That was like... That was like early 90s, right? Uh... uh, uh I want to say something. Yeah. I think... Like, I'm thinking Marathon... I, I don't know, like, all the... Yeah, like, Myth 2 came out in 1996. Well, I guess technically, the original Halo for Not Mac yet. was supposed to be a an RTS. Hmm. <laughs> Oh, man, I, like I remember that. they made... I forgot, they did make that game, Oni. Yeah. You guys remember that? Yeah, which was like... Yeah, I just mentioned it. Did you? Damn it. Yeah. Well, fuck you, then. Your selective hearing you is know, the worst, right? You know, Brian, you made, you, made a joke, you made a joke about having a, a head injury in the intro. I thought you were joking. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, as this podcast your goes on... My, my disability... I'm starting to wonder whether you were actually just trying to tell us something. You're reaching out for help. Yes. I have a problem. Hint, hint. (laughs) Oh, boy. All right, so uh, Microsoft and Sony both released what their free games are going to be for February 2016. I want to start with Xbox. So on Xbox One, members will, starting February 1st, I believe, they're going to be able to download Hand of Fate, and then on February 16th, or basically the halfway point in the month, they'll be able to download Styx Master of Shadows. Which I've been meaning to play. On well, Xbox 360, they will release, first they'll release Sacred Citadel, and then on the second half of the month, they'll be able to download Gears of War 2. And keep in mind that since Microsoft started their backwards compatibility now, all the Free games released on Xbox 360 will also be available for Xbox One. Yeah, so, which, so they, they, just up, they just updated it with uh, Witcher 2 as well. Yeah, which was weirdly free for a time, wasn't it? 
It was like uh, yeah. when they updated it, and then for some reason it was free, so a bunch of people went in and downloaded it. Yeah, which yeah. I tried to, but I actually own it, so I don't know why. Oh. <laughs> so it wouldn't let me because I'd already had it installed uh, from the disc. Cool. Hey, yeah, so more people get to play The Witcher 2. I'm all for it. All right, so Sony released their list. This is so for PS3, they'll get to download Grind Autosport along with. Okay, so uh, Grind Autosport and Persona 4 Ult- Arena Ultimix. Uh, weird title. For PlayStation Vita, they'll get Lemmings Touch and Nova 111. And for PS4, they'll get Nom Nom Galaxy. And Helldivers: Democracy Strikes Back, but the Helldivers is also a cross-play, cross-play for PS4, PS3, and PS Vita. So you'll be able to switch saves between the two, and you'll also be able to play with each other, even if you only own it for one of those systems. Hmm. All right, I'm kind of looking forward to Helldivers because I've heard really good things about that. Yeah, I've played it. It's actually really, really fun. All right. Yeah. Shall we move on? Hell divers. You expect them to have a theme song like Broforce does. Okay. <laughs> All right. So you you guys remember that Conan the Barbarian MMO? No. Oh, yeah. Like Conan. No. Yeah. Yeah. I remember so, that it was very generic. The guys who made that are making a new Conan multiplayer game called Conan Exiles. Oh, and yeah, it's been made by, uh, what was it? Funcom. Funcom, who also made that other RPG. What was it? Uh, the Secret World? Oh, that's the same people? That's the same fucking oh, people. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> They've described it as a, first and foremost, a multiplayer game that can be enjoyed on both private and public servers. So, but does it have his Arnold in it? This is the make. Or, this is the make or break. It could. He could be. He started whoring himself out recently. You see all the uh, commercials for his. Movie. Oh, how could I? How could I miss them? Yeah, yeah, they're everywhere on YouTube. And on fucking football, which whenever I go to my friend's house to watch football, I'm just constantly shocked. It's like, how do mobile games make enough money to advertise on? NFL it, um, yeah, advertising it, time. It still amazes me, even when people explain oh yeah they make tons of money it's like like hundreds of thousands of dollars a day yeah it's still just it's baffling ugh yeah Yeah. okay so insomniac maker oh i was uh... gonna say yeah uh before we go yeah i was actually really looking forward to a conan game oh yeah because i thought oh this is gonna be awesome it's single player and then when i kept reading uh my face just like it went from smiling to just horror, and then when they said, oh yeah, it's being made by Funcom, it's like, oh, well, it'll be forgotten after, like, a week, once it comes out. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's their MO. And most people trying to make MMOs in this modern day. Mm. Yeah, just wait until World of Warcraft dies. <laughs> Give it, like, five years, and then wait one more year after it dies, and then you're fine. Alright, so Insomniac, makers of, as previously mentioned, Sunset Overdrive and the Ratchet and Clank games, have announced a Metroidvania game. Oh, well, let's not let's not forget the uh, oft-forgotten Resistance series. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I really forgot they did that. And the, <laughs> how can we also forget Fuse? Oh, no. <laughs> they're a magnum opus, if I it, just it, myself. It, it's very easy to forget Fuse, because it was terrible. Oh, hang on, wasn't it? No, it's not called Fuse, it's called Overwatch, right? No, it was called No, that's Overstrike. the Blizzard thing. No, 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 no. it was no. called... No. Overstrike <laughs> was, was the original name. Oh, Overstrike, Overstrike. Yeah, Overstrike. yeah. Oh, no, it's Overwatch. Just Overwatch. Is, yeah. <laughs> Overwatch isn't out yet. Yeah, Overwatch is a Blizzard man. game, Overstrike was the original name of the Insomniac game, and then it got changed to Fuse. <laughs> Alright, so, <laughs> their new game, <laughs> Metroidvania game, called Song of the Deep, which looks like you can switch between driving around a little submarine and also going to on la- quote unquote on land, but you're really underwater. So the entire game looks underwater. 2D side scroller, Metroidvania-ish, looks cool. 
except for the fact Mm -hmm. that the publisher of the game is GameStop. Oh, yeah. What? Yes. GameStop is the publisher and exclusive distributor of Insomniac's Song of the Deep, which means that you'll still be able to buy it digitally on, like, Xbox Live or Xbox Live Store, the PlayStation Network Store, or on Steam. Or you can get a copy free in an issue of Game Reformer. (laughs) (laughs) But if you want to buy the game physically, you'll have to purchase it from GameStop. This is strange because I don't know if you guys remember, I think it was last year GameStop announced that they were going to start getting into game development or fund, like one of the CEOs was talking about, we'll fund exclusive parts of the game so you could only buy this DLC at GameStop or if you can only get it if you pre-order stuff. So maybe this is potentially the start of that initiative where they're testing the waters with a a low-budget kind of indie, not really indie since it's a AAA developer, but a low-budget-ish digital game and see how that does. And if it continues well, then we'll start to see a bigger rollout of, like, GameStop publishing, like, AAA titles. (laughs) Which, from a business perspective, where, what was it, over the last year that digital sales now make up over 40% of the game retail market? Or, so that doesn't help GameStop. No. So, yeah, I, I really. From a business perspective, this makes sense, but yeah, from a consumer perspective, I don't know if I want to, 10 years from now, see a get new game and it's like published by GameStop. Yeah, I don't want GameStop anymore. Mm. I really want it to go away. At the same time, though, an Insomniac made Metroidvania game? <laughs> I'm kind of on board with that. <laughs> what, um, what's it called? Song of Song, Song of the South. Oh no, that's, that's Song of the South is something different. <laughs> no, Song of Song, of, Song the of the South was the the Disney movie they never released from the vault because it is not. It's extremely fucking racist. I don't know if it's ca- extreme. Ca- it's casual casual like, racism. I would say it's time. pretty bad. It's a product of its time <laughs> of racism. <laughs> is it racism or is it just blatant ignorance? I think both. <laughs> little, little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. Yeah. All right. Uh, there were some Dark Souls three screenshots. Not really much to say about that, but you know, it looks like Dark Souls. I'm all for it. And then um, EA. This this is kind of came out of the same news where they were sweet got the original like, oh, this is how we know how many. Xbox Ones have sold is because they did their yearly financial stuff. Might have just been quarterly. I don't know. Whatever. We kind of we know for sure that Titanfall, the a Titanfall sequel and Mass Effect Andromeda are are both going to be released sometime before April of 2017 because they're both on their docket for releases before that quarter of the new year. So we I th- we think they've previously announced that Mass Effect Andromeda is they're shooting for 2016. But they haven't officially announced a Titanfall sequel yet, even though we all kind of knew it was coming. Well, I, uh, what, what's the, um, the the guys? They used to be uh, respawn. Infinity Ward. Respawn Energy. The, the, the two, the, no, the two main oh, guys. Preston Zampella. Yeah, I think it was uh, Zampella that came out and said we are making one. Oh, okay. This was ages ago. Yeah, this yeah. Was... It, I think that was back. I don't know if they ever officially announced it. It was just a matter of, I, I think what you're referring to is when he said, if we make a sequel, it's not going to be exclusive. Yeah, that might be it. Yeah. Yeah, because like part of their contract was Titanfall 1 was going to be exclusive to Microsoft things. Well, it, it basically wasn't going to be on PlayStation, but any future games are going to be multi-platform. And they haven't officially announced it yet, but that's going to be one of their big E3 things, so... And I wouldn't honestly wouldn't be surprised if it's going to be like in the Sony conference, just so Sony can be like, "Oh, look, we have Titanfall as well." Mm. <laughs> or they may save it for EAs to show their own thing. Whatever. Uh, Mass Effect: Andromeda and Titanfall Two both coming out before April 2017. Not really a big surprise. Let's hope they're not bad. <laughs> uh, I. I don't like how little they've shown of Mass Effect and Drama. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I've actually amazing. gone back to I've actually gone back to Titanfall recently, and it's still really fun. 
Oh yeah, what I played of it, and I, I've only played very little, but what I played was really fun. It mm-hmm. was just it's most of the complaints I heard was there wasn't enough content there. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And I mean, Mass Effect Andromeda is uh, could go either way. I think. Yeah. Right. Bioware, it's it's odd to think that a new Bioware game is not a sure thing anymore. <laughs> yeah. Now th- now that belongs to CD Projekt Red. <laughs> <laughs> The new Bioware. <laughs> All right. In a strange turn of really, dude, the Michael on is it? I can never tell with French people. <laughs> Michael Ansel or Michelle Ansel, and I'm sure I'm pronouncing Ansel wrong, says that Beyond Good and Evil Two is still possible. <laughs> he says, "Doubt That's that." The problem we have, we have no choice. Says Ansel, Beyond Good and Evil 2 has to be great. When we started Beyond Good and Evil, there was not mu- that much pressure. The people are, the crazy thing is that Beyond Good and Evil was really not that successful and nobody talked about the game. And now, year after year, more and more people are talking about Beyond Good and Evil 2. So he's still talking about it and he says it c- could still happen, but it's really a matter of will Ubisoft pony up the money to pay for it, or is this going to be another situation where? Later in this year, he's going to start a Kickstarter for Beyond Good and Evil 2. And oh, God. And after the Kickstarter is an overwhelming success, then they'll announce, and Ubisoft is publishing it. Yeah, no, he could pull a um, Shenway 3 or whatever and walk Shenway out on the 3. Ubisoft yeah, conference yeah. and say, oh, yeah, here's a Kickstarter for Beyond Good and Evil 2. Sure. You know what might actually be happening is, because he's the guy who's making that new game, Wild, which... I'm still not exactly sure what that game is. It has the Snake Woman in it, so uh, yeah. I mean that's what, that's what I remember. It is. Um, the because he makes the Rayman games, and those have been relatively successful for Ubisoft. They're at least yeah. Um, so Wild may I'm just guessing that may be like the testing ground where if this is successful, they may give him the money to make Beyond Good and Evil too. Mm. Who knows? I would really fucking like that because I only I only played Beyond Good and Evil like I think back in like 2012 for the first time, and that game holds up. Yeah. Uh, have either of you played the original? Uh, no. Beyond Good and Evil. Yeah. Yeah. It's a really good game. Yeah, it's fun. It kind of reminds me of um, I don't know the wackiness. It kind of reminds me of like Jack and Dexter. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, it's like one of those like wacky cartoony games, but then like at a certain point in the narrative you're like, Oh shit <laughs> shit just got really serious <laughs> <laughs> and you're totally on board with it. Yeah. And then in the final real not like the final piece of news, but the final one I've got here, I don't know if you guys have got anything else, is Breath of Fire three is finally getting released on PlayStation Network as something that isn't just a it's, it's getting re-released, basically. I know a lot of people who have been wanting that game re-released for fucking ever. And <laughs> Sony's finally getting around to do it. They're going to release it on, confusingly enough, a digital release on the PSP, the PlayStation Vita, and the PlayStation TV. Which, I think the biggest surprise of this news is they're still supporting the PSP? Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, I, I, I didn't know that. That's actually surprising. I have a... Uh... I have another story. All right. This one really isn't uh, that big, so go ahead. This is actually a pretty fucking substantial story. Uh, EA just bailed on E3. Really? Oh, no, no, I saw that. Um, it, it's it's not essentially that. They're still going to do a press conference, but uh, they're not going to have, like, demos available on the show floor. Uh, they're gonna, uh, okay. They're going to have their own event. Ah. Which is, it's like going to be in the same city at the same time, but it's just not going to be in that giant uh, center with everyone oh. else. But they're so still going to do a press conference. So that's EA essentially saying, I'm going to make my own casino with blackjack and hookers. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Fucking idiots. <laughs> Let me see if there's anything else that has happened in the past day. Right, you guys got anything else? Or? No, I got nothing else. Other than the uh, joke petition about uh, fucking Danny DeVito. 
That's it, yeah. So, in, I don't know, I might as well say it. Yeah, so in case people didn't know, there's actually, I don't know if it's a joke or not, because, I don't know, because it seems people are actually being serious about this now, is that some, the, uh... Well, explain the game first. Okay, so, yeah, there's this game coming out, where it's kind of a Pokemon game, except it's not like the usual Pokemon, and it's about a uh, detective Pikachu. So it's Pikachu as a detective, right? And he talks like he talks human, right? Like like Meowth from the fucking show. <laughs> and people are like, you know what would be awesome? And someone was like, you know what would be awesome? If Danny DeVito was the voice actor for the detective Pikachu. <laughs> and so they started a petition and now and I'm checking this. It's like, what is it, 3 p.m. here in Chicago? And it's like it's the 30th of the first month. Let me see. 30th of the first month. It's the 30th of the first month, yeah. First right now. So, shut up. It's just, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> of January. It's like... It's, in the year of our Lord, 2016. In the year of our Lord. Yeah, it's the 30th of January, and, like, right now, it's got 34,393 people that have supported this fucking thing. And I'm pretty sure in, like, another, I don't know, I would say, like, half an hour, it'll probably get, like, 3,500 people. So, yeah, apparently. So, how funny would this be if this actually turned to be true? It'd be pretty great, actually. Do you, Yeah. Come on, we gotta get that meowth. <laughs> that was really, that was a really terrible Davido impression. I know. Oh, can you do any better? No. Yeah. I could, but I'm not going to. Uh huh. Sure, try. No, I'm not doing any accents on this Ugh. fucking podcast. You all fucking shit on me. <laughs> no, I won't. When have I ever shot on you? Go fuck yourself, Ryan. <laughs> See. <gasps> See this? You see, I'm 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 the most supportive one, and I get shit upon. All right, I found one last story. I'm your Jesus. Yeah, I, I, I get Apparently, hurt. Activision is working on a new Ghostbusters game for the PS4 and Xbox One, and oh, a, a movie tie-in, maybe. <laughs> Apparently, a fully fledged game that is going to tie into the Paul Feig Ghostbusters movie. So, uh, I'm... yeah. I was excited until I read that, because I actually really liked the Ghostbusters game they released, but that was because it wasn't tied into a movie or anything. They actually yeah. took their time on it. I, I'm not looking mm. forward to Ghostbusters movies coming out, because it's just yeah, like, no, no, no. It, And I know what the thing is nowadays. I don't know what's up with people, but it's like everyone's saying, oh, yeah, it's because you're sexist, or because blah 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 and it's like no it's because like all of these women i've never seen before and or like really three of them yeah, i've never seen their comedy i know they're all like most of them are from saturday night live but it's like you've never seen melissa mccarthy yeah i, I was, was just... no i was just about to say three of them i don't know one i do and most of her movies are shit apparently her last i don't know if it was her last movie uh spy was really good yeah. but that's one out of like how many <laughs> of like was it identity theft the heat bridesmaid tammy the thing i keep hearing about um spy is that it was generally okay but the best things about it were actually like jason statham and jude law huh? and that she she generally fell back on the usual fat jokes yeah so it's like if you're I best seen it, so. yeah if I mean, yeah i haven't seen it like, like okay that's i don't know all right. So is that on the that all the game news we got? I think so. So I just found this piece of other news, not related to games, but I'm sure you all find it interesting. All right. So Mike Coulter, the guy who's playing Luke Cage in Marvel's uh, Netflix universe, which is the uh, cinematic universe, and uh, Agent Locke in the Halo series, yeah. Oh, yeah. he says that they have cast Iron Fist. Oh, okay. But they they are not releasing who it is yet, but Ugh. he says that the person has been chosen. No. So expect some why, time, probably why I'm say gonna that? sometime close to Daredevil's release or sometime after season two of Daredevil release, we'll start talking more about Iron Fist. And that's in March that yeah. season two comes out. Because it, it's kinda like what they did with uh uh Luke Cage as well. They waited till 
Jessica Jones have been released, and then they started talking about it in more detail. So they they don't they won't don't want to detract attention from Daredevil season two. So they will probably wait till that's out and then start talking about Iron Fist. Yeah, probably. I'm I'm really looking forward to Daredevil. That's gonna be oh man. Oh yeah. <sighs> I really want a new trailer. I want, like, an actual trailer with clips. And... You know fucking Netflix doesn't release trailers until, like, two weeks before it comes out. No, that's... Well, they've been yeah, releasing trailers for House of all the fucking time. That's so because that's series. the Temple show. Yeah. And, God, Which, that might, see, might not be for long. Season 5? <laughs> is it season, season 4? Yeah, season 4 is this about one to come out, out, right? They already announced the season 5, which oh. basically guarantees my not watching the show. <laughs> Well, well, well. And the creator Frank left. Alderwood. The creator left the series, so Oh, did he? Yeah, I think what people are speculating is he had a plan for it to end it at season four, and then they're like, No, continue. And he's like, Alright, fuck Actually, no, what happens is um Frank Frank's story ends with season four and then it's just Doug is season five. God. He's the main character. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Don't make me throw up. <laughs> Which would actually probably be good because I actually like Doug. I mean, he should have died. Sure, spoilers for House of Cards, but um. Anyone who wants to watch House of Cards has already watched House of Cards. Yeah, it's true. Is that it? Is that all we got? Uh, I think, think so. so. <clears throat> all right, so uh, that was this week's Rage Select Community Podcast. Yay! Huzzah! Uh, Huzzah! Yeah. Next week. Yes. Goodbye, people. This has been Ryan Graff. And in this corner, Wayne in... Well, I'll stop. <laughs> oh, shit. He's doing, it. He's doing it again. Wayne at five, six hundred pounds of... Okay, salt. I'll get the spoon. Get the spoon. Okay, no! I'll, I'll no! Hold it no! Yeah.